Good evening and welcome to Tuesday Talks with You've Got Mail. I am so excited for several reasons to be here tonight, mainly as I get to visit with our wonderful guest once again. Um, and secondly, tonight at the end of the interview, um, we have some challenge business to take care of. So I'm a little excited, a little nervous about that. I'm always excited for each and every one of you who are uh, that come to watch. I miss you when I'm not. It seems like it takes forever from Tuesday to Tuesday. And then last week we had a Tuesday and a Thursday and I was like, oh my, I might actually be getting into this going live thing and I might have to do this more often because I enjoyed seeing you in the comments more often. So once you pop on, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, first off, if you don't see a red button, I believe it's right there. Uh, uh, you are in the re replay and I'd love it if you'd put hashtag replay in the comments so I can reach out and say hello to you. And um, hello, Mary and Jan, Michigan in the house. Um, so I have just a couple of things. Um, but first, guys, our guest tonight is an absolute sweetheart. She is an incredible crafter with years of experience, and it shows in her work. And if you've watched her before, you know that. Um, today on our very quick three-hour tech run-through, <laughs> <laughs> I was so delighted to learn so much about Tracy Wellman from Country Charm by Tracy. You guys say a big hello to Tracy. Welcome her tonight, and uh, we're just going to have fun. Oh, I am so honored to be here with you, Mel. I tell you, and so honored to be um, with everyone tonight. And uh, so it may be just a little bit of setting, um, you know, different scenery because I'm actually in my dining room. And uh, Mel got to see that earlier uh, this evening, but I was planning to go live. Uh, in my craft room that y'all usually see with my background and stuff. I had it all cute and everything, you know, 4th of July and everything. But sometimes, you know, when you're on these platforms, you got to roll with the punches. <laughs> and we had to roll with it, didn't we? And we I'm telling you, roll, three roll hours punches. today, and it might have been Hello. longer. I just kind of stopped counting at three hours, maybe. But <laughs> it was perfect. It just flew by. It flew by and the, the picture was perfect. The sound was perfect. And then we get on here a quarter till and it's like. <laughs> I know. I, 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 and I had the same thing. Nothing. Everything was the same. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to reach out there. Hello, Cindy from Funky Country. And hello, nannies in the house. And I love my favorite nanny. <laughs> and so I'm assuming there's two. I think my husband must be on here too because he's also admin and there's two you've got males on there. So oh, you, you awesome. guys are confusing me. Janice Ireland, who was our guest last week, is here in the house. You guys remember from uh, Vintage Country Crafting. And hello, Denise. Thank you for spreading the joy. And Tammy from Tampa, Florida. And Lori, oh my goodness. Lori's from Louisiana. The, oh, you're gonna make me homesick again. Make me homesick. Margaret Turner is in the house. Hey, we Margaret Turner. I hear your earlier. name a lot. <laughs> yes, she you're, is. Her, your support is just awesome to us crafters. Definitely. I see so many names in uh, in just in the chat and, and that I recognize, and I just I'm just so delighted to be here with you and honored to be here with you, Mel. I am so excited to have you. I have been waiting for a really long time to have you on because I remember when I asked you and you said yes. And I was like, oh, and then I looked at my calendar and was thinking, oh, man, <laughs> it's June <laughs> before I even have the first opening. <laughs> oh, man, that just time just flies by. It sure yeah. does. Hey, Leanne. Hey, Jan and Lisa and Glenda. So many of our our sweet friends are here tonight. So glad to be here with y'all. 
We are. Now I'm wanting to know what Funky Country is saying, holy guacamole for. Holy guacamole. Oh, goodness. <laughs> hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. And yes. it's so great to have you here with us tonight. But I'm telling you, it was three hours that I got to listen to this beautiful soul, beautiful inside and out. I could have gone for three or four, five more hours talking to her. And we don't have that time tonight. So we're going to move right on in here because I want you guys to hear and feel what I had today. Uh, you're going to absolutely love Tracy. If you have not watched her, make sure you go over and, and watch her, follow her. And um, oh, goodness. Yes. Funky, the three hours. Okay. <laughs> It just flew by. It just flew by, you know. It was really a joy. It you know? was. It was. Hello, Paula and uh, Tabby. Okay, so first, right, right off the bat here, can you just tell me a little bit or tell all of us a little bit about your family and where you live? Okay, awesome. Well, if you don't know me, my name is Tracy and my uh, crafting page is a country charm by Tracy. And uh, I live in Texas, USA with uh, my husband of 27 years. And then we have two, uh, two sons. Uh, my oldest son is 25 and my youngest son is 15. There's nine years age difference uh, in my boys. Uh, but, you know, that's just the way the Lord planned it. And we just, you know, roll with it. I also have an eight year old grand. Well, he'll be eight on on uh, Saturday. So he's pretty close to he's closer to eight than he is seven, you know. And so uh, we're making a big deal about his birthday and all mm -hmm. of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I've been calling him eight years old, you know, all week. So it's kind of in my head. Uh, anyway, I live in a little town called Brenham. Uh, Y'all may have hear me, you know, hear me say that if you watch any of my videos, but Brenham is in between Austin and Houston and kind of 45 minutes triangle wise uh, to Bryan College Station. If you're familiar with that, we're also the home of Bluebell Ice Cream. Yes, Bluebell Ice Cream is made here in my hometown and actually Actually, I we bypass the creamery every, almost every single day. My brother works there, my sister-in-law, and so we have lots of friends and family that work there. So it, it's it's a uh, it's pretty awesome to have it here <laughs> in our. Well, you had me at Bluebell ice cream. You, I didn't know that earlier today. Yes, oh my I forgot goodness, to tell you that. Oh, well, they used to have this flavor called chocolate decadence. They yes. no longer have chocolate decadence, but I'm telling you, that was the best ice cream ever really? you guys they're always ever. coming out with new flavors and stuff so i have my sister-in-law she works in the front office so i'm going to put a bug in her ear to say oh, that yes. i have somebody that wants chocolate chocolate decadence back <laughs> oh yeah oh <laughs> graham says her husband loves him some bluebell so it just kind of like a little landmark also mm -hmm. i just lived down the road i forgot to show you that this morning in our three-hour conversation I just lived down the road from Washington on the Brazos, which is the birthplace of Texas as well. So, you know, I, I do kind of live in a famous town. <laughs> well, you know, um, do you know Cindy from Funky Country? Um, well, just met her, just met her through uh, being on Craft Around the Clock. Mm -hmm. And so I think she's in Waco. And so I can't wait to meet a lot of my crafting sisters because we all kind of live, live around here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Leanne's on here from Dita's Craft and Creations. I mean, yes. you can have a big old Texas get together. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Cindy uh, Creation says she's in Texas also. And I know uh, that uh, Carrie from Crafting on the Struggle Bus, she mm -hmm. lives in Alvin, which is on the other side of Houston. And so, uh, you know, Connie is from that area. So we're going to say that she's from that as well. Jessica from Jessica's Party. Mm -hmm. to she's up in Fort Worth and so you know Texas is where it's at everybody needs to move to Texas <laughs> well you're making me think about it that's for sure you're making okay if you don't mind I'm going to take a little little break right here I know it's early on but before I forget Cindy or Cindy's creation says Mel I love your necklace if you don't mind I'm going to tell you guys about my necklace and my cuff 
Can anybody Please. guess where they're from? <laughs> my <laughs> my uh, necklace and the diamond star, it has stars. I don't know if you can see it on here, which reminds me of Texas. Is um, They're from Dave Roswell is the creator of Rawhide Studios. And so the cup is on the website now but the necklaces are custom made. This necklace is custom made. And yes, he does custom work. Doesn't take him very long. I showed up this morning. Well, I don't know what time I really showed up because <laughs> we talked so long, but I showed up and he said, give me 20 minutes. And I mean, I was back in 20 minutes and he had this gorgeous necklace ready for me to wear tonight. Hello, Dave is in the comments. Dave, if you Hello, wouldn't mind Dave. me, Yes. Would you put your uh, put your link uh, to the website in the comments and uh, everybody make sure to go check out Rawhide Studios. It's just rawhidestudio.com. And uh, if you like the jewelry and want to purchase some, you some of you may have seen um, Carrie from Crafting on the Struggle Bus, Connie's Creations, the Nanny's and Crafts and Dita's. Uh, crafts and creations all in april they were wearing his earrings and then right this month lisa brown from brown eyed girls is wearing earrings also so she has a code that is brown so i'm gonna give you a little secret all right because i don't have a code if you'll put brown in that code you get 20 percent off Shh, don't tell dave okay so the intermission is over the commercial is over <laughs> Let's get back to our main attraction here. <laughs> um, so you, you've just told us a little bit about your uh, family there. I love the, I actually have a difference in age with my kids. And it was really nice because we had a built-in babysitter. Did you ever have that? No, no I did not. <laughs> uh, my boys are so different, mm -hmm. but yet, in some senses they're so similar now they are are becoming the best of friends now because my older son uh who's 25 was really into sports anybody who knows my my son skylar is really into football basketball all of that stuff and my youngest son spencer is finally getting into all of that so they finally have something in common and they can discuss and have like a healthy debate versus uh, just being the irritating little brother, you know, that right. kind of thing. Right. And so it makes my little mama heart so happy, of course, to see that. But no, when he was younger, I because of the nine, year, eight, nine years age difference, mm -hmm. I'm like, you can use that to your advantage. He can be kind of your little go-getter and stuff. And he's like, no, get out of my room and stuff. Yeah. I had told him um uh, to watch tonight so i don't know if he's watching my my son skylar uh he usually he he supports all of my craftiness he always likes all of my stuff and and everything and i'm like oh did you did you like did you really like that he goes i don't know mom i just know it's yours and so i just want to support you <laughs> oh my God, that's so sweet i love he that I always mm -hmm. i i do and even spencer as well he he is my uh the, my both of my boys are so different but yet they're they're the same when it comes to they give me good advice i guess because they've grown up with me being a crafter their whole life and so that's of course some of the, the story that i'll tell y'all tonight but they they haven't known anything different and and it's all while mama was working full time <laughs> until one year ago you know, so uh, but I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I'll, I'll that they're part of my story, you know. Yeah, it is, and she has a beautiful story. So we're gonna get there. I promise you, everyone, we're gonna get there. But um, when we were talking earlier today, you mentioned that um, you've been crafting for a very, very, very long time. So do you know or remember what age you were and what your first craft was? Um, what, what, when I think back to that, when I first remember is, um, being a crafter in, in my high school, like high school or right out of high school. Uh, that's when I really remember like my first memories of being a crafter. Uh, my, um, I don't, you know, I'm an, 
I was born in 68. I just turned 54 in May, just a few weeks ago. And so the thing, the reason that I say that is just to kind of get people to understand, you know, we had paper dolls and stuff that we cut out of magazines and all of that stuff, but we didn't have all the artsy, uh, crafty stuff that that people have now and so I'm the oldest of four uh, I had two younger brothers and then I have a younger sister and and actually there's a nine years age difference between me and my sister as well so I, my brothers kind of were my best friends and so they would play you know I would play trucks with them outside and they would, you know, play with dolls or whatever because that's just what we did and so I don't remember having any kind of craft or anything but in high school i think um or right after i got involved my parents had a 25th uh, wedding anniversary and that's what i remember uh doing the corsages for my parents uh, 25th wedding anniversary and i remember i made my mom's corsage and i made me and my sister a corsage and uh, i i'm even thinking i would have to go back and look at the pictures but i'm even thinking that i made my my dad's uh, boutonniere as well as as my brothers you know because they renewed their vows also and so it was like they had a ceremony at the church and then they had a little reception and stuff and so that's what i remember so i'm gonna say 18 19 probably is when i started mm -hmm. getting into the crafting and then also um i tried to do cross stitch um and I, that was you know, kind of um, something that I enjoyed, but that's not something that I do to this day. But cross stitch probably was my very first craft that I tried to do, cross stitch. Um, <clears throat> excuse me here, I'm gonna jump over here real quick. Margaret Turner says, I was crafting before you were born. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, I, God has been good to me and me and my sister, my younger sister, we, we, um, I don't know if you've seen any of our pictures, but you know, we do, people think, you know, we look alike, you know, and, and actually she's nine years younger than me. So I jokingly, she always says, that's my mama talking to me. Like when people say, oh, are y'all twins? And she's like, no, that's my mother, you know, because little sister doesn't want uh, to be told any different. So uh, <laughs> it's all in fun. It's all in fun. I have I have the best best family. But that uh, worked out well for you because they're I thinking, know, that's, wow. That's what I said. You know, either you look old or I look young. So it is what it is. <laughs> I'm going to say the latter. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Oh, goodness. So um, I'm trying really hard <laughs> about what we talked about earlier. I said, oh, so um, instead of, so okay. I, I, I told you, and my word is anyway. <laughs> I know. We all have it's that. Funny. But our <laughs> but our viewers and our community, they love us. They love us, you know, and, <laughs> and despite our little quirky flaws, you know. <laughs> My amazing, so okay, flaws. Okay. <laughs> it, it's so funny because I'm going to start asking that of everyone. What is your yes. go-to word that you find that you the say over and is, over well, anyway, again? It's just kind of like a segue, you mm -hmm. know, just like uh, I say um a lot as well. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of like a segue into, okay, the next thought. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, why don't you go ahead and tell us? I'm trying to, uh, to do a different segue here, and that just didn't work. I'll try a yeah. different one in a minute. Be um, yourself, girl. Be yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, as we were talking, you, you you started crafting at a young age, but and then you mentioned when you came on that you're a full time crafter as of a year ago. Well, there's a long time between there is. you know 19 and a year ago because you already told us you're 54, which is the yeah. same age as me. So. What what why don't we take start at the beginning there and just kind of tell me what you did? Uh, what was your first job? OK, well, my very first job was actually when I was a senior in high school, I worked at the daycare, a uh, school daycare and uh, everything is part of my journey uh, into th the person that and the crafter and, and the, the, you know, mother that I and wife that I am today. Um, that's where I 
I worked at a daycare and in, in like through school or after school. And so that's where I kind of took up cross stitch because my friend and like on down during the downtime and stuff, when we had movies and nap time, mm -hmm. she would cross stitch. And so then I took that up because I'm like, well, that looks interesting. And so then we became very good friends uh, that she actually was my matron of honor in our wedding. Uh, mm -hmm. That is part of our story as well. And so um, when I graduated high school, um, I, you know, fulfilled my dream of becoming a cosmetologist. You know, some people may not know that about me, but I did. I had dreamed of being a hairstylist and um, I was going to own my own business. My dad had told me he would, you know, put a little shop, you know, beside their house. I was going to open up my own shop. And that was my dream What is what I was going to do. But as you know things would happen and you just kind of go on about about your your business and you go along your path and you um you know if you follow the path that the lord has laid out for you and you look back and you go that's why that happened and so the reason that i'm telling you this is the god sent me to or allowed me gave me the opportunity to go to cosmetology uh, school for two very important reasons in my um, life is because um, it first it gave me uh, put me on my career path that I retired last summer after 32 and a half years um, with full benefits at you know 53 I was able to retire and um, also cosmetology school helped me find my husband and so I know that some of you may be laughing about that but it's part of my story and so you know I had a dream of being a hairstylist and that's what I was going to do well um and it's no no fault of of the uh salon or whatever that I was at it was just I myself I didn't have much confidence and I didn't um, have a lot of initiative <laughs> to go out and seek more, you know, I knew I needed to build my clientele and, uh, you know, what I was going to do with, you know, build my dreams and stuff. And so I probably should have moved shops, but I was like, okay, well, it'll get better. Well, I had, um, a client that was, um, that I did her hair and she worked at, um, it, you know, a facility that was called Brenham State School at the time. Now it's called Brenham State Supported Living Center because they're not schools anymore, but they are facilities that um, they care for people with intellectual disabilities. And so uh, she was a supervisor at the time and she's like, you know, she had been there for a while and she's like, it's stable. It's a very good job. You have insurance and you have benefits and you have a retirement plan. And, you know, at 20, early 20s, I'm like, well, I don't really. Uh, OK, you know, I wasn't really <laughs> like thinking that far ahead. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, OK, well, you know, I talked it over with my parents and it's like, well, you know, you can give it a try. You can always go back to hair cutting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I don't want to cut anything out, but I stepped with it. I started in direct care, which was care for the individuals. It was more like a house parent kind of thing. Uh, it, you know, right before they're ready to move out into like a group home setting or on their own. Um, but I really had my sight set on more of a clerical role. And so when I retired, um, I, retired as an administrative assistant, um, the highest that I could go, but it was just because I, God allowed me to have those supervisors that saw my initiative when it came to that and helped me grow, you know? And so mm -hmm. that is what's so important when you find people that you can help. We rise by lifting others. And that is so, so, so important to me. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, as of um, last July, um, I retired from that job after 32 and a half years. And I, you know, and as of August the 1st, I became a full-time crafter. So the Lord is, you know, giving me the opportunity to be a wife, a mama, um, you know, uh, a fanny, that's my grandma name, you know, to my <laughs> grandson and, you know, do the, the, the desires of my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and so 
as I mentioned, so that was like my first, you know, reasoning yeah. why I went to you want to get to number two. <laughs> but there are two. Uh, and the reason I say is because um, when I said I found my husband is because, um, and this is so funny when I when I say this. Okay, so like my friend that I became, you know, good friends with, you know, during high school, and then we all kind of like had like a group uh, you know, that we like a whole bunch of friends got together and that kind of thing. And we would, uh, go out to the dances and, you know, go to the parties at the houses and stuff. You know, this is way before any kind of cell phones or, you know, any kind of, um, like email or anything. So it's not so like this week we'd say, okay, what y'all doing next week? Y'all gonna go to the dance. So we were like, we're playing the dance or we plan where we were going to go before, you know, that's just how things were. Well, my husband, I was part of the group. He was part of the group with a whole bunch of other uh, people. Neither one of us were, had any kind of, any kind of, oh, well, you're, you know, hello kind of thing. We just, we were friends. We, our families knew each other. And so um, when I, we actually, and that's what I told Mel this morning, we actually, when we were seeing someone, we actually went on a double date he with his girlfriend, me with the guy I was seeing at the time, we actually went to a concert, you know, and we laugh about that. Now, neither one of us had any kind of any romantic feelings for it, for the other. And so uh, we I laugh and say, when the time is right, the Lord will open your heart or open your eyes or whatever <laughs> to see the person in a different light. Uh, but what I did was um, so he had. Um, lost his hairstylist, whoever was cutting his hair. And so she moved away out of town or whatever. And so another friend, he's like, you know, hey, call Tracy. You know, she she cuts hair. She'll cut your hair. So he did. He either asked me, called me or whatever. I'm like, sure, come on over. So I don't know. He did that for a couple of years, I would say, before we started dating. And so uh, like I was telling Mel this morning, I, you know, like he would leave like after it cut his hair, my mom would say, that Ricky, he's a really nice guy. Why don't you go out with him? And I'm like, no, mother, no. He likes to party. <laughs> <laughs> he's, not, he's not my type and I'm not his type, you know. And uh, <laughs> I'm embarrassed when I when I say that because it just it's, a, it's just a true, he and I are a true, couple of opposites attract you know he kind of liked the more the girls more outgoing you know and me I'm not I'm not outgoing I mean I can have fun but I'm not you know the life of the party or anything like that he kind of <laughs> was the life of the party <laughs> yeah. uh anyway and so um so part of my journey, you know, just with my first job through the high school and me going to cosmetology school and, and, you know, it just has that, that path that, you know, the Lord lays out for you that you don't see at the time until you look back on it, you know? Uh, and so, yeah, um, the, our friends, the one, you know, the one that I, uh, that, that I, worked through when I was at high school, I worked at the, the school daycare. Mm -hmm. uh, she was our matron of honor. And then her husband was the, the one who said, call Tracy to get, get, get your hair cut. You know, we always <laughs> say that you're the one who was together. Uh, <laughs> and you had plenty of time, two years to really get to know him. You cut yeah, his hair for two yeah, years. So, and, and, and even, even during that time, I was, I really, I wasn't interested. Um, and he really wasn't interested either. Cause of course, you know, I asked him, but he's like, no, no, it really wasn't. And so um, my brother had got married and my sister-in-law and, and uh, after their wedding, I, like I told Mel this morning, I was kind of like the coordinator, uh, the wedding coordinator or, or like helped with, you know, you got to put all this stuff out and, you know, you got to make sure at, at the end of the night, you have to put everything back together. And so they, cause we were all in the big group of friends together. Mm -hmm. So they were invited to the wedding as well. So he came over and asked me if I, he could help me pack up the stuff from the wedding, you know, put stuff in the car and that kind of thing. The rest is history. You know, <laughs> and that's a nice history. I love it. But I'm going to hit over here to the comments for just a second because I saw a few things pass by. 
Okay. Uh, such as, um, oh, I, I, I know I saw it. Carol T, uh, Studio 5 and DIY. She's also a cosmetologist. Nanny is a cosmetologist and a nanny. And wow. um, Nanny also said your husband's very good looking. So watch oh, out. You're sweet. Well, I think so too, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, hello, Pat from Unique and hello. Karen. Hello. Uh, Karen says that she and her husband are total opposites. Uh, he calls me his sunshine and I call him my moonshine. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's he, really he cute. Is. He is my. He is my rock. He is my voice of reason. And, you know, he has, um, you know, he is not, he is, he's good uh, it's in his own, like he can build things. He can build things out of wood. He's my woodcutter and all of that, um, you know, and so supportive of, of anything that I, that I ask him to do. But as far as the craftiness and social media, he is just a non-social media guy. He's not on Facebook and doesn't have any intention on being of being on Facebook. Uh, and so actually he graduated high school in 1982. And so they just had their 40th uh, um, school reunion that we didn't even know anything about until after the fact. And then some of our friends were post or I had saw it on Facebook and, and, you know, cause everything is kind of on Facebook now, you know, the invites and they don't, they don't call people anymore and they don't send invitations out. It's kind of like they put it on Facebook. And if you see it, they like encourage people to tell the other classmates or whatever. So mm -hmm. he totally missed his 40th school reunion because he's not on facebook and i'm like sorry <laughs> I know. my husband has a love hate relationship with it he really does he would go through this time where he'd have a page and then he'll just he gets rid of it and then he'll get it back and then he gets rid of it and it was so funny because uh he we finally talked him into having it and he maybe has i don't know seven friends on there but he got rid of everybody and he got rid of my mama <laughs> <laughs> shame, shame, shame. Exactly. Mama is now one of his friends. <laughs> yeah. But he does. He just has that love-hate relationship with it. Um, yeah. And you know, I I love what Facebook brings. I've lived far away from family for so long that it just keeps me in contact with friends right. and family. Mm -hmm. And and now everybody, there's so many of you that I'm seeing so many creators here in the comments tonight. Facebook is part of your business or it is your business. And I know that it hasn't always been your business. You um, started off with YouTube, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Video creator right. for YouTube. Um, when did you start doing that? Okay. So, you know, like I, like I had mentioned, I have been um, a crafter probably, I did my first craft show when my oldest son, when I was pregnant with my oldest son and I got into the crafting, I did kind of like painted jars and clay pots and uh, that kind of thing, like Santa's and like Uncle Sam's, like out of uh, wine bottles and beer bottles, that kind of thing. And we did little craft shows and um, my husband um, would help me set up and that kind of thing. And then me and a friend would do that together. And so then uh, we started, then I got interested in the toll painting, that same stuff that I do today. And so I started doing some pattern things, buying books, buying patterns offline that they, you would actually have to order and they would ship it to you. And so the pattern, what I would have to draw it out of wood. He would cut it for me off of the band saw. So we did that for several years uh, until I got pregnant with my youngest son, uh, and probably in 2006. Um, and so he was born with ADHD and it was, I'll be honest with you, I wasn't strong enough to handle the type of ADHD he had. He literally had ants in his pants, you know, he, he just, he wouldn't leave things alone and, and all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I was kind of a little burned out. So I, kind of put that to the back burner and decided to focus on him and be a mama to him and that kind of thing. And so then in 2009, 
Um, I wanted to, uh, I act, actually, after Christmas, I had ran across a Cricut Expression, which is one of the very first Cricut machines that you had to put the cartridges in. And I bought uh, this machine because it looked interesting. I had got it uh, for like $130. It was like on clearance. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know how to use it. And so I just Googled how to use Cricut expression or how to use Cricut machine or whatever. Well, all these videos popped up from YouTube. I didn't even know what YouTube <laughs> was. And so that sent me down the rabbit hole, uh, the rabbit trail of YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. And so then I kind of mastered the Cricut expression. So then I wanted to give back. Well, and then I wanted to post things. I was um, blogging. I had, Oh, that opened up a whole new world for me. I didn't have to bother my husband to cut wood and that kind of thing. I, it kind of was something that I had of myself. And mm -hmm. uh, so I started doing that and that opened up the card making and the scrapbooking and all of that stuff. So my very first videos were more for card making and scrapbooking and stuff. And so uh, and also YouTube, actually, it was not the community that it is now. It actually was just a place to upload a video and like link it or embed it on your blog. There was, was no the how -to place. Yeah, it was, it was just a, it was just a housing. <laughs> yes. It was just a housing for YouTube. I mean, just for videos. And mm -hmm. so there was no community in that. And so I probably did that for you know, a few years. And then, you know, that kind of fizzled out for me. I got kind of got tired of that, you know, after about seven years, you're like, yeah. And so I kind of like put all of that on the back burner. And then uh, around 2015, my sister uh, who um, works at the store that or she's the manager at the store that I do the wreaths for. And I know a lot of my followers uh, you know, that's why I do the put the wreath tutorials on my Facebook as well as on my YouTube. She had asked me if I would do some wreaths for their shop because they were trying to get some unique um, kind of handmade different things, you know, to kind of build that because it was it's a furniture store and then they were opening a gift shop section. And okay. so they wanted okay. some unique, you know, handmade wreaths. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, well, I'll just film it. I'll just, you know, wreath making was kind of getting popular at that time. So I put out, you know, a video and then I started getting some interest in that. And so it's really evolved for a while. I was just going, I didn't set out to be a wreath maker. I really did. I'm more <laughs> of a crafter, painter. I love my old school happy dots, paint splatters, torn edges, all of the rustic different you know i'm primitive country i love all of that all of that stuff that's my heart heart and soul but um i really but you incorporate it. that into your wreath sometimes i do i, nice. I do mm -hmm. i do mm -hmm. and so the mesh the deco mesh wreaths sell the best at the store so that's why i do a lot of the deco mesh wreaths. Mm -hmm. I, I also do some of the grapevine wreaths. And, you know, during my journey of, of doing the wreath making, I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions. And it also is how uh, pricing is also always an issue and, you know, supplies and all that kind of thing. And what I, what I usually tell people is it really depends on your uh, geographical location. Like I, uh, most of my wreaths I keep around the same size and I know what what to, you know, kind of to put in them so that they'll sell at the store, you know, versus, um, you know, if someone is on Etsy, there's going to be a pricing difference, you know, and also mm -hmm. in your hometown, if you're going to do craft shows and stuff like that. So geographical location always plays a big part in all of that. I want to kind of expand on that just a little bit because um, I lived down in Louisiana for 20 years, down south. I grew up in Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas area. And especially in Louisiana, the bigger, the better on the wreaths. But not only that, it's all the big door swags. Right. And I can't talk without my hands, y'all. I got it. I got to swag them. Right. Um, it, it, it's huge. It's absolutely huge down there. I moved to Wyoming and... Um, 
you don't really see very many wreaths here. And when you do, it's they're more natural. It's very mm -hmm. natural. Everything's very natural here. And it's funny that you think about stuff like that when you move, because I, I started looking around and, you know, I go to pull out my wreath and put it on the door and there's like, no right. one else. Was there. And I know that that wasn't exactly where you were going, but it kind of yep. hit something yep. in me that, that being where you live in Texas and being mm -hmm. in the South like that, do you, <clears throat> is it more of that, the bigger, the better? And do they also like the big swags that go over? Not in my hometown, not in my area. Um, usually the wreaths that, 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 that I make, uh, the 14, I usually use the 14 inch, uh, you know, size and that's my kind of my go-to and, you know, I have made some larger ones and they do sell because, you know, at the store that, that I, you know, I design for them, mm -hmm. uh, they do have customers coming in all the time from all over because they're right off of the highway and that kind of thing too. But, Honestly, I want to put, I want to make them things that are going to move, you know, and not sit there. You know? Right. And right. So um, I started, when I started doing it, it was just to help them out and just to give them, you know, a unique, unique thing. Because I also do a lot of the painted signs that are on the uh, wreath as well. And so that's one of the things that's my heart, you know, is painting and, God has given me the gift of hand lettering. And so yeah. I was, I was um, persistent that I wanted and I wanted to learn how to hand letter. And so I know my style is not everyone's style, <laughs> but it's my style. I, it's what I do. It's what I love. And it's just be kind of, kind of become part of who I am. And even if I try to try a different font, I can't, I can't do it <laughs> because I just love, love, love what I do. Her hand lettering is fantastic. You guys, you need to go watch that, but whether it's someone's style or not, everybody, you're right. Everyone has a different style. Your work is perfection. It is beautiful. Oh. I absolutely <laughs> love it. No, I think it is. I mean, come on y'all. You're sweet. You're sweet. <laughs> it's you're sweet. beautiful. And you but do a great job with it. I appreciate that. But that's what I, I just want to encourage my community is that, um, you know, so many, so many people reach out to me. I get the sweetest comments and I get the, the sweetest messages and the messages that are near and dear to my heart are the ones that nobody else sees, but me, because they send me a private message and they say, you know, they, one that really sticks out to me is she told me, uh, she said she had lost her sister uh, like the year before and she and her sister would craft together and she ran across one of my videos on YouTube. And, uh, then that kind of sent her into the watching, uh, you know, back to back. And she had just watched so many of my videos and she said that my voice kind of sounded like her sister. So it was like her sister was still there with her and I'm trying not to cry, oh, no. but <laughs> She sent me the most heartfelt message and she said, just watching you craft and hearing you gave me a sense of healing that I needed so much. And so I am so humbled and so blessed to be able to do, that's why I do that. And so that's another reason why I'm trying to, I've been on YouTube for many years. Um, and I only say that is, I've been on YouTube for many years and I do have 86,000 followers or subscribers now, which I'm so blessed, but there are some people that just start a YouTube channel in only a couple of years and they got over a hundred K or 150 K or 300 or whatever. I, I have to embrace my journey where I am and the right people will be there, you know? Uh, and so I try to stay true to myself and, also, I've, I'm trying to uh, do more live crafting, kind of like I call them crafting chats on Facebook. And mm -hmm. so that's when I'm doing the actual craft. And so those take a little bit longer, but then I, uh, I downloaded them and then I upload them to my YouTube channel because there are a lot of, um, I get sweet messages and I'll get comments because people are homebound or they 
that it's like a friend, uh, you know, they mm -hmm. love listening. And, you know, on YouTube, you can always fast forward through the replays. You can fast forward through different, you can put the closed captions on, you can fast right. forward, mm -hmm. you can go back and say, what did she say? Or what did she do? You know, so the replays are always great. Um, and so anybody who's watching on the replay, thank you so much because <laughs> you are where it's at. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take just a minute and say hello over here to some people who are in the comments and then they just started rolling past me. And so hopefully I can get back. Uh, hello, Pam. Glad you were able to hop in with us tonight. And Jan Drury and Kay Goldsmith. Uh, hello, everybody. And I am so sorry. Uh, we're having such a conversation here that I may have missed a lot of things that you've said, but I promise I'll go back through the comments. Um, but I do want to take a moment for you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the comments right now. I'm going to look right up there and and I'm going to pay attention to them. So if I'm not looking at the camera, I'm trying to find those questions in the comments. Uh, but while I, you guys are putting your excuse me, your questions in the comments. Um, how, when we were talking earlier today, you were talking about how long you've been on Facebook, how you did the move from, you haven't really moved, but how you did the kind of crossover between the two social media platforms. Yes. So when did that start that you started moving over to Facebook? Okay. So back in 2009, when I started doing the cricket and I had the blog, uh, and website and stuff, blog, blog spot or whatever, they uh, like people were creating and then Facebook came on the scene. Um, we were all encouraged to create a Facebook fan page. Okay. <laughs> Fan fan page. Page. And, and Mel and I had lots of fun. Uh, you know, that's why I'm saying it like that, because that's what those business pages were called back then. There were no, there were not groups were not, I mean, it was just something that they were exploring. So it was a Facebook fan page that wasn't your personal page because, you know, you didn't put a whole lot of personal stuff on your personal, I mean, on your fan page, because that was just for, fans you know and i'm saying it in quotation because it's evolved so much anyway so see that's one of my segues so when i started um so i really didn't put a lot of time and effort into my facebook fan page well then it turned over to facebook uh, business pages. And so then they started incorporating that you could like do like a kind of like a limb or, or a branch off into you could make a group. So then people were so then I would like put my pictures and maybe a link to a video or whatever. Well, then people will start contacting me through messenger, sending me pictures of their recreations and stuff. So then I made a group called the country charm by Tracy crafty community, where it was just kind of like a place where people could upload their, uh, or post their, uh, right. pictures of stuff that I've encouraged them to do. Well, then it started evolving. People started posting their creations and it's just grown, you know, so much. And so I'm so appreciative to appreciative to that because sometimes people will do something that I've, you know, encouraged them or uh, inspired them to do. And it's better than mine. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I, I wish I would have used that color. I wish I would have used that ribbon. And so I'm blown away by the talent that is out there. Uh, anyway, so in uh, summer of 2020, um, my Facebook page was five thousand at 5,000. And so I was content with that. You know, I really, I wasn't into, I did the pre-recorded on YouTube. That's kind of what I was used to. And I really wasn't, couldn't get in. I didn't show my face. All you could see was my hands doing the crap. And so I was kind of, you know, reluctant to like do FaceTime. I mean, um, face to face and stuff. Cause I'm like, nobody wants to see me. Uh, but then, you know, I joined a couple of uh, coaching groups and that's what they were saying. You need to get out in front of your audience. You need to, you know, do those things. And so I knew, I, I knew that networking was important. And so I had been in some of the bigger groups that really work a little bit over my head. So then when um, Lizzie and Aaron had, 
uh, develop their coaching group. Mm -hmm. I joined theirs because I needed, I needed to, to find, I needed the basics of the networking. And so that is where some of my wonderful friends, these friendships <laughs> that I have made is from that coaching group. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I am so appreciative to uh, Miss Sonia, your sister from Sonia. She shed sensations. Say that. <laughs> um, she really encouraged me, pulled me out of my shell. Um, she invited me to my first Facebook um, uh, live event. And I was like, no, she's like, come on, you can do it. You can do it. And so I am so appreciative to her. So guys, from 2020, middle of 2020 um, until now, now I have been sharing a lot of you know, more stuff. I'm on Facebook every single day. I post pictures. I share old videos. Um, you know, I'm kind of in the algorithm and that kind of thing now. So in 2020, my Facebook page was at 5,000. So now it's over 36,000. And so I'm so appreciative uh, to Sonia for pulling me out of my shell, Lizzie and Aaron for having that coaching group to give me that basic networking and those friendships and that the friends that invite me to these events and that kind of thing. I joined craft around the clock. So that is giving me another, you know, avenue of um, getting together with friends and, and, you know, just supporting each other and community over competition is one of my mottos. I am a big advocate for giving credit where credit is due and, uh, you know, so I don't want to go, I can go on and on, but I, I just want to encourage anyone who's just starting. Don't look mm -hmm. at my journey. Don't compare my journey to your journey. Or I, I have stopped that. I do not compare my, compare my journey to the anyone else's. I try not to. Mm -hmm. We can, we're all human and we can get caught up in that, but, and it's easy to look at the numbers and, look at somebody else's journey and say, well, why is that not happening for me? But yet your journey is so different than mine. My journey is so different than yours. And we all can make our mark and make our journey what it, what it needs to be. Okay. So I haven't found, I've been watching here too. I haven't found a lot of questions to be honest. Besides, it looks like Nanny wants to know when you're going to meet up with her. Well, Nanny, are you are you coming to the uh, refab event in July, or have you changed your mind? I know things life gets in the way. Yeah, and here this is this is this is a big one. This is why we all love Margaret Turner. I'm going to throw it on the screen. Tracy is a little shy. You just can't get her to talk. Who said that? That's Margaret Turner. I tell you, I love that lady. She tells me, and it's so fun. Y'all, I, I told her earlier today, I basically just need to ask her a question and let her go. That's why I said you just have to hold up your hand, do a cut, do something. Peace out. <laughs> It was wonderful. We had a great uh, run through. Yes. I loved it. I can't wait to meet her myself, Jan, Nanny Janet. It's going to be an awesome time. Um, let's see. Uh, Paula says, just asking because wreaths sell around me and I am a crafter looking for crafting groups closer to Illinois. Okay. Uh, just asking. Did I miss a question up there that you're asking, Paula? Oh, what part of Illinois? But she's not in Illinois. She's in Texas, Paula. Texas. Maybe there's some, I missed something in the comments. I'm so sorry if you were talking to someone else. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I just thought I saw a question. <laughs> okay. Um, no, Nanny says, no, can't afford it. So I guess we'll have to meet up halfway somewhere. And no, Pat says, no. Tracy has covered everything. We don't need to ask her anything. <laughs> That's a, you know, and, and, I, that's why I, I was so honored when you asked me, little old me, you know, um, because I don't know, I've just been, I, I put so much into my projects and I try to explain it the best that I can because I try to anticipate what, uh, what my viewers or my, you know, 
uh, my friends are going to ask. And so anyway, that's just you how I'm wired. <laughs> and when you when you do your crafts on your lives, you're very good about teaching and I, I um, teaching what you're doing, you know, so that it's it's very step by step. Do you think that come from doing the videos for YouTube? Yes, it comes from the videos uh, doing YouTube because um, because I tried to for years, I would just do a video and I just assumed that uh, people knew what I was talking about. Well, then I would get comments. What, what, you know, they would ask specific questions. So then that, uh, that has helped train me. And that's why I try to explain when I'm doing my live videos is why I kind of talk through it because I'm trying to anticipate, think about a question of what I'm doing, what color it, people will ask all kind of questions. What paint you're using? What color? What paint brush? Where did you get it? Um, where can they get it? They will ask all kind of questions. And so my thing is, is the only stupid question is the unasked question. That That is in, in my daily life as well as, as in uh, I still, because I have videos on YouTube that have been there for many years and I will get questions from a video from five years ago. And I have to, you know, if, if it's something that I can remember, I'm like, Oh gosh, I think I got this, those scissors. <laughs> at, I mean, <laughs> you know, they don't, because people will watch a video because it'll come up on their suggested. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't look at the date. And so they mm -hmm. just leave a comment and say, where'd you get that ribbon? What's the name of it? You know, I don't know, but I'll be happy <laughs> to give you an answer. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I try to be, uh, con uh, try to be conscientious of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, and my, 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 uh, I don't want to say followers, but my, friends and my watchers, they will call me out and they will say, you did not tell us where you got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can so see I that. Right. <laughs> um, September Patterson wants to know, how do you get your great ideas? What is your inspiration? Okay, well, um, I'm inspired every day by everything that I see online, Pinterest, I get a lot of inspiration. Um, and also, oh, I'm trying to think, I get inspired by other people as well. And so, you know, like on YouTube, I'm trying to find that healthy balance of, you know, YouTube and Facebook. I know some people are one or the other, Facebook or YouTube. But since I started on YouTube, that's kind of where I, I like am drawn to. But Facebook has given me that uh, outlet that I can go live and I can, you know, do my craft and I can download it and then upload it to YouTube. I wasn't um, very successful in being able to connect to go live on YouTube. I really need to try that again, but I'm really liking the, you know, Facebook and then I can upload it to YouTube. But my inspiration comes from anywhere around me. If I see something in Ho Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree or, uh, you know, just any and everywhere. Pinterest is a big, a big one. And then, you know, Instagram, um, you know, because we like our feed, we think that it's oversaturated because we sub, uh, subscribe or we follow to certain channels or pages or, you know, we keep seeing certain accounts, but that's just because that's our likes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of groups that I'm in and uh, sometimes it gets a little bit too much and I'm like, I have to snooze them for 30 days or whatever. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that, you know, and that is one of the most ultimate co uh, compliments is when someone recreates something that I've inspired them to do. And also I have some sweet friends that they will give me credit. And, and I appreciate that so much. That just warms my heart. I know not everybody does that, but it just really is the right thing to do. And 
You know, my parents taught us, let your conscience be your guide, you know? And so we are, as creators, you're going, we all shop at the same stores. You're going to get some duplicates. You're going to come up with some of the same ideas, you know, and stuff. So I try not to sweat the small stuff when it comes to, um, I I don't want to say, you know, because I put it out there. And so Mm -hmm. somebody, if they copy it or fine, that's fine and dandy. (laughs) I put it out there so that you can recreate it. You can sell it. You can do whatever you want to do with that. I, God has given me these platforms and these gifts and these talents to share. And so that is my gift back to him is to share those gifts and talents with, with my friends that watch on Facebook and YouTube and all of that. Can you tell us what your YouTube channel is so that some of us can go over there and catch some of your videos? Well, you can find me at um, Country Charm by Tracy or just put my name in, Tracy Wellman. Uh, And also when I first started my YouTube channel, um, I went by the name Craft Junkie 2 because I am a craft junkie. I love all kind of different crafts. Mm -hmm. I get bored with just the same thing. And so my, when I was, when my husband and I were doing the uh, craft shows, we were country charmed by Tracy. And so Mm -hmm. then in 2015, when I started uh, redoing some stuff, I, I uh, I had like a little hiatus. And so Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to the craft. I mean, the uh, country charmed by Tracy because it has my name in it. And so that's why I did that. So, yes. Um, and then also on my page, I do have a link tree. I know that sounds weird, but all of my favorite links are in there. Uh, you know, all my social medias. I would love it if, you know, if if you're interested in seeing me. People come and go. People unsubscribe, subscribe, unfollow, follow. I try not to get caught up in the numbers too much because it'll drive you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even look anymore. I don't. I don't want to go there. Um, so I, I probably need to move on here in a minute to some challenge stuff, but before we do, um, <clears throat> I had a question for you that you reminded me to ask earlier and I have got to, is there anything else that you would like to share with us tonight that we may not know about you or that we might be surprised by knowing or just Anything you'd want to leave us with tonight? Well, one of the things, I'm a 54-year-old. I love boy bands. I love boy bands. And that will be something that will blow people's mind because I'm an old lady. And no no (laughs) present company excluded. But I'm an old lady. Yeah. I, but I love boy bands. My favorite is Backstreet Boys. I love all of their music. <laughs> and New Kids on the Block is, I just, lo- I just love them. And NSYNC, those are my, and so people would be very surprised. Very surprised because I am a boy band junkie. That I'm just going to add that to my, my junkie. I'm a craft <laughs> junkie. I'm a gadget junkie. I love gadgets. I love cute scissors. I got all the cutters. I got all the little machines. Um, I'm a ribbon junkie because I have a room, craft room full of ribbon. But yes, my I think my uh, people, uh, my friends, your friends, people who are watching on the replay, they would be very surprised. This 54-year-old woman is a boy band junkie. Oh, I don't think so because I'm seeing here. Boy band forever, Cindy Lou. Um, Brown oh, girls crazy. love that three boys. Um, September Patterson, me too, and I'm old too. Older yes, than you. I uh, do. Paula, my I, kind just, of music. <laughs> I just love them. I do. I just I just love them and I just love I mean, I love watching them dance. You know, my sister who's nine years younger than me. She uh, grew up, you know, New Kids on the Block were her band. And and um, mm-hmm. I remember taking her, you know, I was driving. And so I took her to her first concert, New Kids on the Block. They played in the Astrodome in Houston. And so, I mean, that's, you know, was a long time ago, probably in the 80s, you know. And so that's when they were young and but they're still going strong. They were just there uh, 
last month, I think, in Houston, and they're touring and stuff again. So I told my sister, I said, we really need to go to a new Kids on the Block concert. She goes, let's go. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. And it has been so fun having you here tonight, Tracy. I love it. We're, we have to get together at some point. We're going to meet up at some point here. This has just been way too much fun uh, earlier today and to tonight. And Margaret's got to go. Oh, no, Margaret, I'm so sorry. I haven't even gotten to the challenge stuff yet. So you'll have to watch the end of it in replay. Um, but do you, would you like to hang around for all the, uh, the challenge information? I would. Yes. All right. Well, again, I am so thankful you said yes and came on this show. It's been delightful. You've made my part of it so easy. I just have to say I had one of those wild days I, that one thing after another. <laughs> it was perfect. It was like, I don't have to come up with that many questions, y'all. <laughs> I loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Do a few open-ended questions and there we go, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Love it. Go. Okay. So I know that um, I'm excited and delighted and a little bit nervous about this upcoming challenge. And yes, there's going to be a drum roll. But before we get to that drum roll of actually pulling things out of buckets. Yep, I have the real buckets and I hand wrote all those little things in there because I still can't get my printer to work. But anyway, I want to go through just the timeline really quickly. Um, I want to thank every single one of these creators who said yes, it just was um a heartfelt thank you. Um, yes, I'm nervous, Pat. <laughs> I'm so nervous. And I don't know why I'm so nervous. I think it's because it's bigger. It's bigger than what we have been going on. My my yes, I I'm <laughs> I got crafty, didn't I? I, I used a cricket and I hand wrote some notes. That's my craftiness here tonight. And uh anyway. I just want to say thank you for saying yes, for doing this challenge. I think it's going to be a riot. It's going to be so much fun. We have small pages. We have bigger pages. We have guest judges. We have a lot of moving parts. And since there are a lot of moving parts, I really want to go over the timeline a little bit. It's kind of the same. If, you, if you've been watching the challenges for a while, you'll know the first part of it's the same. But if you're new, on Tuesday nights at the end of the interview, just like tonight, I will be announcing three things. <clears throat> I will be pulling, actually, names, three names out of one bucket, a project out of another bucket, and an obstacle out of the third bucket. And those people that I pull their names out will be crafting that challenge on Thursday nights. So the first name that comes out will craft at 5 p.m. The second name that comes out crafts at 6 p.m. And the third name that comes out 7 p.m. on Central Time and Central Time. So it's going to be challenge nights will still be Thursday night. Voting will open up at 9 p.m. Uh, Central. We're going to do our very best to get it open. Opens up right here on this page. You've got mail and you have until midnight Friday night to vote. Now, Saturday morning at 9 a.m., again, right here on You've Got Mail, will be the announce, uh, the announcement of wh whose project was, was chosen as the winner. Okay, and then that person, here's where it changes up a little bit. That person now goes to a throwdown with Lisa Brown. So this is the throwdown with Lisa Brown. Is that why your stomach's in knots, Lisa? Uh, <laughs> throwdown with Lisa Brown challenge. So she's going to craft first. Then that winning project cr creator will go second. And then right after that, we're going to have a live talk show judging show. Those two creators that were here Thursday night are going to that did not get their projects picked are going to come back and be a judge along with a special guest judge. We're going to have a little talk show. And um, yes, I will post their pages. Yes, yes. I will post pages and we'll get graphics out there. Um, so be watching graphics on all of our pages, everything. I would ask you, please, 
every one of these people, no matter how small or how large their page is, please go over, check them out, like and follow them, share their pages. Those are all things that you can do to help every single one of them grow. And it's so appreciative. And uh, are you guys ready? Yes. Let's see. Uh, why it's what not send me a private message send me a private message for that all right so are we ready what do we want to know first do we want to know um we want to know the project first right is that what we want we want to know the project first let's see and it's not right is it in the there so let's see it's full Here we go. What is our project going to be? Let's see if I've just got one. I was framed. I was framed. <laughs> All right. This is your interpretation. I was framed. I was framed is your project. So I would assume that means something to do with frames, right? And there are frames around a lot of things. Pick a hard one. Is that because you're not going to be in it this week, Kelly? <laughs> I love that. Okay. I was framed. And I'm going to have to do something about turning this. See if the streaming service will turn it so you guys can read this stuff next time. I'll check that. Okay. Oh, we got news to the next bucket. We need to find out what the obstacle is. And so... I folded these differently, so I'm gonna, there's a bunch in here. You guys can see there's a bunch of obstacles in here, and they're all inside one another. So this one had more writing on it. Sock it to me. Yep. Find a way to use a sock. You need to find a sock and use it as a supply or a tool. So I was framed and sock it to me. There you go. Those are the projects and the um, the inclusion, I guess you would call that one, or an obstacle, whichever way you want to take it. All right. Now, here we go. You can read it. Oh, thank you. I don't have to change anything. It's just me then. <laughs> Could you read it, um, Tracy? Yeah, I thought that, I thought it was correct, but then I said, well, maybe it's different on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> um... <laughs> maybe I should have my glasses down more often. <laughs> okay, so. This is the one every, yes, a sock, Cindy, a sock. You've got to find a way to use that sock one way or another in I Was Framed. All right. The first name drawn out will go at 5 o'clock Thursday night. And the first name is Carrie from Crafting on the Struggle Bus. <laughs> She's got this. She's got it. She's done this before. She's yeah. an old pro. Yes. <laughs> She's an old pro. <laughs> the second name is Funky Country Cindy from Funky Country. <laughs> You'll be going next. So first is Carrie, then Cindy. Who's going to be the last one of the night? Jessica, Jessica's party decor and more. All Yay, right, Jessica. so there we go. I was framed, sock it to me, and crafting on the struggle bus, funky country, and Jessica's party decor and more. So this is going to be an awesome first week. I think they're all going to be awesome. You guys, you guys, where am I from? You guys have got this. You're going to do a fantastic job. Let's see. Oh, it is. Oh, my goodness, Cindy. You're right. It's Texas in the house. You did this, didn't you? That's right. 
Oh, I didn't even catch that. <laughs> Texas, yay! <laughs> you put a little, little. Uh, what's my what's my friend call it? Janky on it. Put a little janky <laughs> on it. It's gonna be all Texas. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Thank you guys. Oh, they're going by so, so fast here. Yes. All Texas. Congrats to those ladies. It's going to be a fun night. I can't wait. And uh, I hope you all go to their pages. They, they will all be going live on their pages. Look at those graphics. But again, if you are not following Crafting on the Struggle Bus, go follow her page. She will be going at five o'clock. Next will be Funky Country, Cindy at Funky Country. She'll be going at six o'clock central. Fo go follow her page and set your not notifications if you can so you don't want to miss out on this. And then the last one of the night is going to be Jessica from Jessica's Party Decor and More. It's going to be a fabulous Texas kind of night. All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you, Tracy, for being here. I'll let you, you say goodbye to everyone one more time. Thank you so much for having me, Mel. It's been an honor to be here on your page. And I um, thank you for inviting me to be part of, you know, your growing page. And also, if you're watching on the replay, please let us know if you're watching on Facebook, on YouTube, uh, or wherever you're watching. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, guys. And we will see y'all in the next craft next, or next craft challenge. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here. You are amazing. Uh, I love you all. And um, we're go we've gone over a few minutes here, but bear with us. Thank you so much for being with us, hanging in there with us. I love you. And smile often, laugh a lot. It can change the world around you. Good night, everyone. Bye.